Hey guys, it's me, producer Ross, and welcome to another edition of my ITFC. And today I'm joined by good old Steve Groves, the man who won MasterChef back in 2009. How you been doing during all this COVID stuff? Yeah, good. I mean, it's, it's strange. I've never had a, a period like this where I haven't worked for so long. So still not back at work yet, but hopefully soon. Um, so cooking-wise, it's been a bit different. A lot more cooking at home, cooking for the kids. Um, my dad was an Ipswich fan. Um, I was kind of moving towards being a, a West Ham fan initially. Actually, I think the first kit I ever had was a West Ham kit. Um, because my dad was working for, for BAC, who was sponsoring West Ham. So I think uh, he got me a, a West Ham kit. Um, but then, yeah, I started going to the games uh, about 10 or 11, and then I took over from there, really, and started going with, with my uncle more regularly, actually. Um, and then, yeah, I've been following him ever since. A nil-nil against Liverpool in the FA Cup. I think it was in... 92 it was really cold stood behind the uh the goal in the church rooms um i remember it being really windy really cold difficult to see because it was standing so trying to like yeah look above everyone um i think the walk hit the bar i think i remember rightly and uh, the replay was obviously that really great game i think we lost but it was a really good game to watch It's, like you say, it's, it's difficult. I mean, that kind of the well, period I've been following, uh, it's just the kind of the highlight period was that kind of George Burley building his promotion winning team. And I think obviously it's hard not to kind of just say Matt Holland because he's kind of, you know, captain fantastic, just really reliable player, really kind of great up and down the pitch, scored some good happy goals. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's right up there. I, th I think someone I really enjoyed watching, Mauricio Tarico. I think I'd like, I'd like to put him in there to be honest because I think he, um, some great memories of goals he scored. I remember one he scored against Norwich, um, was that the North Stand then, um, beating 2 0 on a Friday night. That was great, great night. Um, goal he scored against Palace was, was really good when he kind of ran from the halfway line and then that one he scored against Man United where he kind of spent it in the top corner and we sat behind the goal on that one so um, yeah and also his little his little snidey digs at people when the referee wasn't watching I think, uh, yeah really really good player to watch it's got to be Burley isn't it I think mean, you know ever since uh, I mean, there, there's been some great ones. I think they've all kind of had their, most of them have had their kind of positive moments. I think Joe Royal was was good in the sense that, you know, it was really exciting stuff. It was just like, we're just trying to score more goals than, than everyone else. So some, some memorable games from his era. McCarthy was good in terms of what he had to work with and what he achieved. Obviously went a bit sour towards the end. But, yeah, I think... None of them really come close to, to kind of what Burley achieved. And I, I think when Burley was there and we were kind of having those play at this point, which you always kind of felt that he was building something. You could see it kind of improving year one year. And even when we were letting the kind of the likes of Tariko go and Dyer go in, they'd always be replaced with a, a few more players that just made the overall strength of the squad a bit better. It's got to be that, that playoff second leg against Bolton. It was just yeah, the the emotions that night. It was just so back and forth. Like we'd score and then they'd score again, and you just everything from kind of despair and even from the first leg after being two 0 down and then kind of pulling that back. Um, yeah, that was just incredible. And then the fact, obviously, the end of it, we'd finally made it to Wembley after all the kind of playoff disappointments um, and never actually getting there. Um, so that, yeah, that was incredible. And getting on the pitch at the end of it. Yeah. That's great. I think it's Royce at Wembley is the one that was just, it was that moment you knew that we were going up. It was, yeah. it was happening finally. Um, so I think that was a, a memorable one. I think that, and also is one against Bolton again, because you knew that it meant we were going to Wembley. So I think, um, 
I think it's got to be the Wembley one. Though. I think it's the the one I've enjoyed the most. Definitely. That, uh, the the re- the relief to know that we weren't going to be hanging on anymore. The one with the white sleeves, Python sponsor, and the kind of lace up collar. Yeah, I really like that at the time. Um, I like the one we've got now, don't actually. Mm-hmm. This year's one, it's a good one. I like the kind of return to the old badge. Um, and the one from the the playoff season under Mick McCarthy, that was a good good Adidas one. Um, and I did like the kind of black and cream stripe ones. They were good from uh, Abbott Ali sponsor one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's go to the for kind of retro thing of the uh, the fight and lace up one. I think the problem is though, because the last years have not been great, and it's been you know quite a good few years that have not been great. I think I've become a bit kind of like numb to the disappointment of uh, of following Ipswich Town. Um, so even the relegation, it kind of it did just feel like it almost felt inevitable. Um, but you know, I think back in the days when we were losing those kind of playoff semi-finals all the time, that used to really hurt. Um, that was stinging. But actually, the worst moment, the worst kind of time I can remember supporting it was about nine 0 at Man United. Yeah. And I wasn't even there. I was I was watching Colchester at Layer Road um, with a load of my mates who none of them supported Ipswich. Um, and every time Man United scored, they would announce it <laughs> over the Tannoy at Layer Road, oh. and all the Colchester fans were going nuts, singing anti George Burley songs. Yeah, cool. Um, I was just stood there like, oh my god, it's horrible. And obviously, there's quite a lot of announcements that day. <laughs> Um, but they were jubilant, yeah, when it was 9 0. And even on the bus on the way home from Culture Stars being pleased from all my mates. Yeah. So that, was a, that was a sad day as an Ipswich fan, very low. Now, um, let's go to your best moment as a town fan. Um, once again, it'd be good to hear if you've got a personal one to yourself. Did you go to Wembley? I did, yeah. And I think, you know, that was um, one of the last games that I kind of. Uh, went to with with my dad before he passed away. So I think that was um, that was a good memory. I, it was just a great day out, wasn't it? It was just really good atmosphere, um, and obviously to get that that win, finally get up into the Premier League, and um, it was brilliant. I mean, I had a season ticket for about seven seven eight years before um, before we kind of got to. To Wembley and got promoted, and then I moved to America just after we got promoted. Missed most of the uh, amazing season of the Premier League, came back and we got relegated. So it was, um, yeah. yeah, I think that, that was kind of that was the pinnacle for me. That, that kind of Wembley, Wembley final I'm winning. Cool, and uh, I just want to quickly go to your you know, when you won Master Chef, did the club do anything? You know, did they know much about you know, you as a town fan and you winning it and stuff? No, I don't, I don't think there was any kind of connection made there, really. Yeah. I did something in the East Anglia, and I did a piece in there, but it's, um, yeah, I don't know, a bit of a whirlwind experience that was. It was just crazy, crazy times, but yeah, we should have done something together, shouldn't we? Yeah, a we big, should. Uh, yeah. Big celebration at the club. Yeah. Well, I was um, um, I was 13 at the time, <laughs> so <laughs> when you won it. 2009? Yeah. Yeah, you're a big master fan, were you? <laughs> Uh, well, I probably did watch it. I know my mum. My mum loves, you know, anything cookery on the telly. So she, you know, she used to just put it on, and I had to be there and watch it with her. So, so yeah. Yeah, there's more. Yeah, maybe it's more of a uh, a mum thing. <laughs> it was it's just weird. Obviously, kind of when you do something like that, you used to being a chef and being kind of in the background and not kind of having any uh, attention for anyone. Um, and then you kind of do your master. Uh, it kind of took me by surprise how much how big it is and how many people watch it because obviously then all of a sudden you've got people coming up to you on the tube and on the street and yeah. kind of giving you a hug and stuff like that it's just the most bizarre thing I mean I say you get used to it being kind of like mums and kind of um, you know, you, you're kind of typical or what you think of as being your typical MasterChef watchers but I remember 
some guy coming up to me in a pub in Colchester with like tattoos all over his face, skin hair dust. Oh my god, it's gonna hit me or something. And um he came up, he's like, Ah, oh, what's your all time of Master Chef? It was amazing. And just yeah. That was a relief actually, it didn't didn't crush me. <laughs> but yeah, um No, it's it's it was just a, a surreal experience winning that. So, yeah, great. Did you ever get tempted to go on bake off? On bake off? Yeah. No, I'm not such such a good baker. I okay. think uh, quit while I'm ahead on that one. Yeah. Have you um have you had a chance to go to many town games? I know you must be a busy busy man with you know being head chef of you know a very very popular you know restaurant in London. Yeah, I mean, really, so I'm quite lucky that the the restaurant I work at is actually Monday to Friday, so do get the weekends off. But living a bit further away now and and. I'm in a young family. It's it's harder to get back to games. And actually, during lockdown, I probably watched more football yeah. than, um, than I've ever really watched in the last kind of ten years. But I get back as much as I can. I'd like to go with uh, Uncle Pete, meet him up there, and, and go to the game. He's still season to go over there. So um, yeah, I like to get back. I get to more away games, I'd say, just because where I live, it's easier to kind of get into London and, and around. Um, so yeah, go to. Go to as many games as I can. Probably about five or six a year. So a bit of an armchair. Yeah. 